Hello, my friends. It has been a while. I know I've been MIA for a good couple of months, and I have missed you guys so much. Well, while I was away, I got married to the love of my life, started a new job twice, moved into a new apartment, and all the other little things. So you know, there was just a lot going on in my life that took my attention away. But all good things, and I'm super happy to be back. Today, I'm so excited to bring you my interview with Katie's story. Katie is an amazing human being, definitely embracing all her desire to develop herself and achieve the results. Katie and I recorded this episode quite a bit ago, and my schedule kept getting pushed back. And all I can think about ever since was this episode because it's so good. In this episode, we talk about personal branding, communication skills, and storytelling, all the good stuff that I geek out on. So grab your favorite drink and join me in this conversation. Enjoy. All right. Welcome to the podcast, Katie. I'm so excited to chat with you today because I believe the personal branding is one of the most important part that we all need to learn. But before we get started, tell us who you are, where you are in the world and what you do. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I'm Katie. I'm a personal brand expert and I'm currently in the northeast of the UK in England. And it is about, well, it's near tea time where we are right now. And how I got started, well, I've been in business about five years now on my own running a social media media consultancy before then my job was a broadcast journalist so I spent over like 13 years in the UK in the industry in radio and television interviewing and reporting and writing and all sorts of breaking stories for that day so I have had the honour and privilege in my time of meeting royalty prime ministers celebrities sporting stars like I've lived lived it all so I have many many tales to tell wow that sounds amazing so I want to know how did you even get started like in the childhood were were you always interested in this field and how did you discover your passion towards this field I've always from a very young age I think I was um, seven and I used to read the local newspapers out on Sunday afternoon for my mom and dad I've always been interested in the news in communication it was just installed in me and I knew even from a very early age I had a, just a vision of that's what I was going to do I also had a vision of being like dressing up in suits and being my own boss this is probably where my two passions have, have, have lied from and um, I remember going through school and at that time I went to an all-girls school and it was a, it was a bit of a difficult time especially with obviously all girls lots of pressure when hormones hit mm. it was like okay if you have a passion you almost were um, disregarded for being too passionate about certain things and back in the day where where I'm from being really passionate and wanting to be something different for example getting into the media which was very hard to get into it was almost like shut down so I fell from a like a very like off the tr- branch of a tree and I thought you know what like this is what I want to do girls didn't like it I was very I was such a tomboy at school right so I had like lots of interests but I couldn't really connect with the girls because we had similar different we were just in different parts I wanted to be a journalist and they all wanted to do something different so I think there was a big disconnect for me it was the start of a beautiful thing when I look back at the time it wasn't okay at the time it was like the worst thing that could happen I lost friendships I was like I didn't know what to do but I just knew inside of me that I really wanted to go and pursue my dream of being on television or radio and I was seen as almost like we have like a saying in England where we like two up ourselves Mm -hmm. so you know I have thought too highly of myself and that was disregarded and I'm all about women supporting women this is where my passion lies from but back then that wasn't the case I mean it was teenage days you know go back to the time when you were a teenager and you come across like girls who are a bit like you know and comments in the classroom remind yourself of that and how far I think society has come now if you're a woman in business it's all about supporting each other right Mm -hmm. so I I almost like followed that dream I went for it I was so determined to make it a success 
And I think after graduating from university, so many of my friends dropped out because they couldn't get jobs in the media industry in the UK. It was really, very hard. But I just knew I had to go for it. I moved to London. And the first job that I landed was with Channel 4 was almost like a, a dream come true. It was amazing. I loved it. And from there, I learned everything from the ground up for being a journalist from a rookie to all the way up to being an editor in my career and I would be forever grateful for that journey that I that I went on. So we kind of share similar like childhood experience of surrounded mm. by the not very supportive like society, the culture and the environment or the friend groups. That must have been really a determined moment where you you know everyone around me doesn't seem to pursue similar path that I want to pursue, but you have this dream that you have this passion towards this field and you really went for it. You really challenges the status quo and got into the industry. You've been really successful at it. That's that's just so amazing and it's so happy to hear. And and I agree with you, women empowerment. Coming from, from Korea and Asian culture, we don't talk about our accomplishment. Be humble, don't brag about yourself and mm-hmm. things like that. And there's a definitely differences between bragging and being empowered to say what we have done and really, you know, articulate our own values because I feel like that's biggest problem uh, yeah. when it comes to women yeah. too that we have a hard time we really cut short for ourselves like and, and I want to break that and so that's why I'm so excited to hear your story breaking boundaries was huge that was one of the main driving factors from like having my career and having like the most amazing opportunities the most amazing parties but then I outgrew that you know I was in that industry for a long time I had by that time my second son and for me there was not that freedom that we all crave mm-hmm. I really wanted to be able to be with my son and have those early years with them and not be able to be dictated to if a story broke I'd have to be there for days on end and it was tough going and I sort of fallen out of love with that role of what I undertook and I started to mentor um, journalists and up and coming journalists right then with their confidence at that time. And I absolutely loved it. I was totally just like, look, this is a new direction. And I just followed my gut. I've always been into like spirituality and really finding yourself. And I really, I fell back in love with that that side of, of me. And I realized I could make a business out of it. And that's that's exactly what I did. So I believe in honing on our skills and gaining our career mm-hmm. capitals. What was your journey like? What did you have to do to master your, your craft? So well, after graduation from university, like I said, when we had to start from the very bottom. Storytelling for me has been the biggest game changer. And when I say storytelling, I mean communication. You know, we mm-hmm. all tell stories every day. How we communicate, how we come across our body language how we actually feel somebody's energy from seeing someone on camera or meeting someone in person. You will know if you walk into a room and you just feel a sense of, you feel the sense that people are looking at you or you feel a sense of welcome and openness. You can sense that. Right. And for me, that was so fascinating. And that's what I loved about storytelling and learning all the tools about how to effectively communicate through to an audience on all different levels. I've worked with so many different organizations over the years with who would have different audiences that I've really honed my craft on digging deep into someone's feelings and emotions to connection with them. I've also learned how to speak publicly and really hone my craft on public speaking and connection. I've also learned how to tap into people's like inner emotions through NLP. Mm-hmm. I have done everything. I'm also an, like an angelic healer now. There's so many things that I've learned over the years and I continue to invest and learn and hone my skills because I believe that's so important. If you have a mindset of always learning and growing, you will also grow and learn with that as well. And I feel like I'm an avid learner, always learning new things, always yeah. listening to new podcasts and finding information. And I think that's the journalist in me. I want to find other things about other people. So really good commun- like communication questions is so important. I, I love them. And if clients know me, then I geek out on asking and receiving questions. It's just what I do. Yeah, I think, you know, as a multi-passionate, one of the superpower we have is learning. Like we have the unlimited Mm -hmm. amount of curiosity towards 
learning. We are just really fascinated by all these new opportunities and learning is a purely joy for us. Um, I want to dig deeper into storytelling. I mm -hmm. realize storytelling is so powerful and communication skills and all this, how important it is to have the effective communication skills, whether or not you're like presenting or just being in the team environment. Um, can you share a little bit about any transformational journey of yourself or your client, where you saw from where they were to, and they saw the transformation results. Yeah. For me, communication comes with like having clarity on what you want to say and really having the intention of how that's going to play out. And in your mind's eye, you play a scene, a scenario, a bit like what you would see in a film. You set the scene, you see where you are and how you go through that journey from the beginning to the end. It's what I do with my clients. And for example, one of my clients who really suffered from a huge mental breakdown, lost all of her confidence, uh, lost her business due to the, like, the pandemic when it begun, and she was at rock bottom. She came to me just helpless, and she knew I could help her, but she didn't know what she wanted to do. She didn't know how to do it. All she said was, I need some confidence. Like, I've, I'm, I'm lost, totally lost. And we rebuilt her identity. And I think this is really huge of like really focusing on who you want to be, who you are right now and who you want to also become, you know, do it in stages. I think we always rush to the outcome. It's about really focusing on what you are now, where do you want to go and who you want to be? And then we focused on building her confidence step by step. So simple things like breath work, like doing a daily five minute breath work really has so many benefits, improving your immune system, improving your focus, um, really helping with your communication of how you want to put words out there. There's so many benefits to breath work. I'm so passionate about it. Simple thing of square breathing technique, you know, anything like fire breaths to give you energy. I, I'm, you, you should be like doing it if you're not doing it. I'm very passionate about it, as you can tell. Um, but when you have that, you also gain confidence of, you know what, I can get through today and tomorrow is a different day. Then you build certain steps. So she went from really feeling anxious to building a business to then, she spoke at a, a public stage four months ago to 200 people. And she like signed up clients right, right there and then. But to see her physically speak and hold herself high, the way she presented and walked on that stage, gave me goosebumps because she was like, she came to me with like a head down, her body language was very down. Her, um, her tone of voice was very sad all the time mm. to have a fire in their body and be like you know what this is me that for me is truly the transformation and sometimes it's not what money you don't see a monetary result you see the effects it can have on you and those are the skills that you build in life and take you on forever you can utilize that over and over again when you have a blip yeah oh my god that's why I love you because you really go deep into the root it's not mm. just about how we present ourselves or like you know what media avenue that we find those are just the one piece of puzzle but really getting to understand our own values and tapping into our own power that we already have and changing those small habits and build up that confidence from really the tools that you already have that's so yeah. powerful I believe that everybody has a story most of my clients that come to me and say I would love to do a TED talk but I don't know what to talk about <laughs> or I really want to do this but I don't know how to do it and I'm like you have a story everyone no matter who's listening right now they all have a story within them and it could be a story of triumph of struggle it could be a story of overcoming something that you didn't even realize you were going through you know we, we situations throughout our daily lives situations from our past and how you are now we all have our story so it's how you connect those dots to that that brings it out in you and by doing the inner work of realizing you know what is my unique I call it a success list if mm -hmm. you are struggling to identify your own um, personal brand or you want to build on something really like focus on who you are as we said but then really create your own success list your skills, what skills you possess, your talents, like what would you say you are talented in? What does other people say of you? So go and ask your friends and family, what qualities do you think I possess? Because sometimes you'd be surprised of how you think you don't have something when others see other something different in you. And that's beautiful, right? We can like realize, actually, I didn't realize I was going to come across as confident, even though you think you're introvert. So really having those boundaries and assessing yourself is a key to then 
going forward. I love the success list. That is so powerful. Yeah, like for example, like time management. People think we don't have enough time in the day. Or oh, I've got I don't have enough time for, for breath work. Oh, I don't have enough time to work on my business. I'm too busy all of the time. And I just want you to just like take a step back and think, you know what, we've all got 24 hours in a day. Everybody around the world has the same amount of time in your day. It's how you manage your time. And if you can't give yourself five minutes of your own time a day, then really you need to look at that. Because once you give yourself the time, you'll realize opportunities and things will come from that. Simple things, you know, just creating new um, a mindset and awareness of going out in the world and thinking, you know what, today is a good day. I always say my mantra in the morning, like today, something amazing is going to happen every day. I get the kids to do it as well now and they love it. You mm -hmm. know, we always choose a word of the week where we have power words. So each week on a Sunday, I will say to myself, okay, what word do I want to possess this week? So for example, this week, um, it was connection. I knew I had a lot of things coming up. How could I then really embody connection? The boys, for them, it's fun this week because they're off on half-term holidays. So they want to like possess and embody fun. So mm -hmm. we're like, right. And if we don't have that on a weekly basis, we will check in, say Wednesday and it comes, you've had so much, everything's been going wrong in your week. I'll always come back to what was my power word, connection. Have I been really connecting to myself, mm -hmm. to my clients, my audience? And if the answer is no, then like that's a kick up the backside, you know? I'm very direct with my clients. I'll be like, well, have you done what you said you're going to do? No. Okay. Let's address it. Why, why not? You know, and yeah. it's harsh. It, or it can be harsh or, but I think it's really good. I think it's a really good reminder of how as your week goes, because we can get into a spiral of, oh my God, this week's gone really bad. Tomorrow's going to be the same thing. And we can get into that spiral and that's just going to be detrimental to your success. I love the piece where you just check back in and see if you actually met those goals that you set for the week. Like, have I been connected? Have I really embraced the word that I yeah. set intention for this week? So the thing that is so powerful in here, because in corporate world, we always find our KPIs and the metrics to track mm. how we're doing towards our goal. But when it comes to personal life, we, we don't normally do that. And I feel like this is an important skill to adapt. And then, you know, when we really start to track, like you were saying, this is simple, this like simple, just checking can change the whole picture. <laughs> I love to know so that we are all in the same page, our listeners and everyone, how would you describe personal branding? What is personal branding to you? I think it's, it's who you are. It's personal brand is you, you are the brand. People get so confused about what, how do I build my personal brand? How do I do this? When you really need to think about you, like you, if you run a business and you are the face behind your brand, you are your brand. So embody your values. So I always come back to you. Like that's why we dig deep on you. I always come back to focusing on your unique gifts, focus on your values and focus on your mission of why you're doing it. I know it's really important. And sometimes we forget the reason why we build a business or we forget that. At the beginning stages, we focus on that so much that when you go grow a bit further, one year, two year down the line, we can forget why we are and we're doing what we're doing. You know, it's simple. So just checking in at certain points throughout the week or throughout the day, throughout the month or the quarter, however you plan your, your own business out, and check back, okay, am I really doing these things to get me where I am? Am I being intentional about where I want to go? And I have a, a framework that I use with clients. It's think, feel, and act. Think about you as a brand, like how you want your audience mm. to think about you, how you want your audience to feel about you and how you want them to act. So what actions would you like them to take from you shining your light and giving your gifts out there? Mm -hmm. That is so important. Some of the things that my audience might wonder, okay, personal branding, I, this sounds amazing. Their face, external facing role or in the mm -hmm. back office or even like stay home mom. Like what is your thought on that? Yeah, I think once you start to, if you want, if you want to try and build out your personal brand, then that success list is great because that's where you start. That's your starting point. You realize actually I have a gift here that I want to share. Look at your storytelling. Actually, I do want to share the story. I've got the same value. It doesn't matter if you're a stay at home mom. It doesn't matter if you're a woman in business. We all have that, that same passion to do and be better and to live a better life. So where do you start? You start with your intention. You start with your mission. You start with your values. It comes back to that again. But also I want you to think about your own 
connection to your yourself but also to, to what you're going to be putting into you know what are you going to be doing if you were to stay at home mum and you were unhappy how can you change that what you know what ways can you change that and don't think in terms of oh I've got no money this week or I'm not sure where the next paycheck's coming from ask yourself okay what can I do this week to make me feel better about the, the direction I want to go into what daily habits can I embody to make me feel good? We know with the law of attraction, if you start to embody yourself and do and say it and do things as you want to be, then that will open up opportunities. But don't get me wrong, you have to put the work in. There's no magic pill here. You have to be able to be intentional about where you want to go. And it's the same with your personal brand. Wherever the person you want to embody, I work with a lot of influencers and they tell me, right, I want to get to like 100k on TikTok and I want to be able to build like my own brand of how do I do that? And I simply say, it's dead simple. You just be yourself. And they're like, okay, I don't want to do that. (laughs) You know, why don't want to do that? I'm scared to show up as me. Why is that? And then we will work from there. And I think once they have confidence and clarity in who they are, then the confidence comes and then they're like, you know what, I'm going to show up today. And then they're like, wow, okay, just by being me, I've built my brand. You know, I think it's important that you look at your own personality, your likes, your interests and decide which parts you want to share, which parts you don't want to share. There's a lot of social media out there that can betray you in the wrong way. You get to control how you want to show up. And I think it's important that it's a reminder because we compare ourselves to so many people, to other business women, to moms. We see people like smashing it online. We instantly compare and look when actually you need to take a step back and just consume what you are doing and focus on you. I know it sounds so cliche, but once you do that, it's game changing. Believe me, I've done that. You know, I used to always compare and be getting so down about things. Oh, I'm not successful as she is. But then I think about when actually, is she being really successful? Is all what you see online real? And how can we take a step back from that? That is just so powerful. When you dig into your own story, really your Mm -hmm. own journey, you are your own game. It doesn't really matter what other people really do around you. It's their own game. It has nothing to do with you. And it's your choice to be inspired or be crippled by it, right? Yeah, definitely. And it's important that you just really, that I always, I know I'm repeating myself, but really focusing on yourself your mission where you want to go get clear on your unique skills your talents that's where you start to build your own personal brand then social media and you know going on to media outlets as well that can build your credibility but you have to start so we all have to start somewhere and that's a very beginning place to start from what would you um give us a one simple action plan for this week anyone can start implementing i would say create that success list if you're oh. really struggling with your own confidence Thanks. and you need a kick up the backside or a new direction or you just want some clarity and a lot of people will say you know what i'm i'm really struggling to show up right now i'm just not feeling myself i'll say go back to your success list Go and write a letter to yourself and say how incredible you are because you can do this. And that's always a really good point to come back to when we're all having a bad day. You go back and have a look and think, you know what, I can do this. And then you can have that action. So definitely success list, create that. You will love me for it. Amazing. Okay. Um, I have a one final question, but before we get there, tell us where people can find you. Any new exciting things that you have or anything that you want to share with us? You can find me on Instagram at, at story underscore media. And currently right now, I'm just focusing on my one-to-one clients. I'm having so much incredible success. I've had group programs over the years. I'm also ghostwriting three novels for clients. So I'm really busy focusing on that side of the business which I absolutely love and I do have plans to write my own book on communication hope if that comes off this year great but if not but yeah I'm really excited so I really feel that um you know all of the things we've talked about today can be really condensed into simplified ways I think information out there is sometimes too much to take so I want to be able to simplify it for people to understand. That's amazing. Okay, yeah. final question. What's yeah. one piece of advice that you would give to your younger self? Ooh, you know what? I love this question because when I go back to that time of when I was a teenager and I would always say, you know, it's okay to be different. It is okay to be different and to stand out. And I would say that you are beautiful. Don't let anybody tell you you 
are not good enough today because we all have that time. We've all felt that, that we're not beautiful. We've all felt that we're not good enough. I would definitely tell her that. There's a song by um, Little Mix. I'm not sure if you heard of Little Mix, but, and it says, um, if they go back to their older self and they say, they tell her that she's beautiful, she's worthy, she's stronger and she has everything that she needs. And I think that's really, that line for me always sticks with me. Mm. Um, even though I'm not a little, little mixed fan, I think that line is really, it's, it's empowering because we often feel, and we look at ourselves in, a, in the wrong way. And I think we just remind ourselves, actually we are beautiful. Everyone's beautiful in their own way. Mm-hmm. I love that. Katie, thank you so much. This has been such a, like I took so much quote and so much notes here. Love um, it. <laughs> this was so much fun. Thank you very much for coming on the show and can't wait to talk so to you lovely. again. Amazing. Thank you very much. That wraps up this episode and I hope you enjoy the conversation. If this story served you in any way, I'd love for you to leave your review on this podcast. Don't forget to connect with me on my Instagram, Multipassionate Genius. And if you have a story to share, I would love to feature you here. So send me a message on my Instagram. Lastly, no matter what, I believe in you and I'm rooting for you. So go out there and create the life you want.